Hey guys, this is Hell Hades free to play. Back on the free to play account, and really, what I want to do today is, is go through rotation two of Doom Tower, show you the boss uh, fights that I've done, show you the teams that I've used um, to basically crack on and try and complete it. We've got one boss to do to the to finish it off today on normal. Um, Give you a general update on the free to play account as well. So we've not really done one of these for a little while. And it has been slamming forward as ever. So let's start as if I was doing a, a bit of a coaching session with one of the guys on a stream. What's a great haul looking like? Um, I started to spread out some of the stats. You gain a lot of extra stats for not a lot of points. If you kind of spread them out early on, get your twos and threes going on in the key areas. You see, I've started to kind of flesh out crit damage, accuracy defense hp way less emphasis on attack because for me it's it's one of the the weaker ones to go after and i'm just starting to build up a little bit of resistance as well which is actually a really good return for your points in terms of great hall especially when we start to consider what we need to do in the uh, doom tower so just starting to kind of build it up i'm probably going to start slamming up towards some of the higher numbers before long but one level 10 and i guess with missions pushing you towards level 10s a bit further down the line i don't know how far away it is from me actually i've not really checked it but someone did mention it but yeah it's, it's a little way down the line that you actually still need to keep pushing on for uh, level 10s in great hall so i will be doing that i can start to do a bit of a run in terms of missions here right the way through to 20 glyphs i can do yeah i could probably do a pretty decent run actually maybe right up to this sacred shard I think I could probably do a bit of a run up to that Sacred Shard with a couple of trickier ones in between. So maybe when we get the next fusion going and I need to push hard on event points, I'll do a, another kind of fun run mission type thing with, um, with missions. Anyway, so we've done that. I've actually, as of yesterday, I'm on day 147. As of yesterday, there is no longer a Drex in the bazaar. Drex is now waiting to be summoned for the next champion ch uh, chase again he's probably going to sit there waiting even though he's massive in terms of doom tower progression i've now got vlad waiting we've got drex waiting it won't be long before we've got huntress and bloodhorn popping up as well so we've got a lot of points ready for the next champion chase event which is actually what you should do if you're properly free to play and want to gain the different rewards as they pop up so this is starting to shape up as a pretty good looking uh, summoning portal now with some nice points kind of gathering dust in there. Um, I've also been doing a bit of a push here and there in faction wars now. So we start to push up you know, some of the factions around 30-ish points. Barbarians, in fact, we could probably do a couple more levels today. Because I've started to get a more fleshed out team for barbarians with Seal, Rorik, um, the Fat Man speed champion and a drop defense we can actually push pretty high We're on stage 17 already if i show you these champions specifically um you'll probably get a good feel for how we're building out champions that are not level 60 because i never want a 60 war made and i don't need to i never want a 60 high cartoon i don't need to uh, i probably won't ever 60 rorik either but they do give me some benefit in these kind of faction war setup so you see with someone like war maiden I've pushed to the accuracy level I want. I've got good speed on her. And then I've tried to get some defensive stats as well. Everything else is kind of irrelevant. She's not a high enough level to ever hit hard. So that's irrelevant to me. So all I'm using her for is to set up my damage. So you'll see we've got... Um, this is actually an attack chest. I just wanted it for the speed. Uh, ideally, this would be HP or HP percent on the chest. But we've got HP percent on the, the gloves to give me some speed. One set of perception gear. Uh, looking for accuracy rolls on it. And then everything else is just kind of like building speed and accuracy together. So you see we've got the accuracy up to, to do her job. Um, and actually, I'm just looking here. She is booked. Yeah, she's booked out as well. So she kind of rotates back to that decreased defense really quick. Someone like High Cartoon. Same thing really. Fast. And I want her to land her abilities. Yeah, so this is a slightly different build for a speed champion. All perception gear, mainly, basically the same build as I've just shown you. But basically, I want her in Faction Wars to land things like the Turn Meter Drop and that type of thing. So she is basically set up to just do Faction Wars for me. Rorik, it's a similar sort of build. 
good enough speed some accuracy to land his stuff and then a bit of defensive stats he's not doing any damage for me and then someone like sky touch is in immunity gear to go and get rid of her own debuffs reasonable speed good amounts of survivability um, she's mainly around for boss fights when i want to block debuffs and cleanse batman is just in a, a reasonable build here good speed good accuracy and he does a bit of damage and then seal really is my damage and she is control so good defense good speed uh high crit rate good accuracy so i could even switch this out to a, a crit damage amulet because of the amount of crit rate that she's got but everyone in the team is kind of built now to do faction wars that's what i want them for they're faction war champions um and the way i've been doing this is i kind of run it on auto from the start see we get some stuns away we get our speed up we drop some defense and then really we're just kind of laying some nukage and i kind of get i've got enough control in this team with seal and rorik are uh, doing work a bit of pushback from high cartoon so i'm not really that worried about the waves too much uh, and you know we're at stage 17 here 17 is a pretty high level and it's not until we kind of get towards maybe a little bit further really keep the auto running probably now so she's just used a big ability there i want to save those big abilities now for the next wave so i'll just take it off auto for a second save the drop defense as well and all we're going to do is just focus on a couple of champions at a time clear them out he's stunned so he's kind of like my last target to go after and actually with a weak affinity for a lot of this stun's gone there so now we go over the one that's not stunned Healed in there and then i throw auto on again so we're on wave two auto goes back out and it's kind of like rinse and repeat but yeah so we just kind of blow our way through the waves and you know this is kind of the same i think right the way up until the boss fight now we i've got enough in this team uh, maybe if i start taking a load of hits they might start to drop i'm not sure because i don't have that much survivability on high cartoon or war maiden really but because we've got so much stunnage going on between um seal and rorik yeah so you see we take a big hit anytime we're taking damage it's a big old slap there um but still passively heals people up so this should end up being one of my easiest factions to complete and one of the reasons why i focused on this one early is because i know i've got the champions to do it you see we only got two stuns away there it might prove to be a little more challenging to kind of beat this whole setup I don't think Norog stunnable I'm pretty sure he's not in fact so he might end up being a bit of a threat and we do have to three stars so it's, it's only worth doing this if we're going to get three stars away um but still can pick people up so as I say in terms of factions barbarians for me feels like it's going to be the easiest faction to beat uh, and I might have to to beat stage the final stage the boss uh, stage I might just have to um, level 50 some of these other champs, but I don't think it'll be many. Get more stuns out. Also got their counterattacks up. If there's anyone that I'm afraid is going to die, then I will just go after Skullcrusher instead of him. Uh, because, you know, these people are not doing much damage. My High Cartoon, my War Maiden, they're not doing any damage to the main threats. Can hit people that are stunned though like this, and you won't get any sort of retaliation. But we're just going to throw out drop defense now while well, i've got most of them stunned she is low speed up stun them all i don't know if this guy can't be stunned maybe he can't oh, let's ally attack against him oh he can stun there we go back onto auto so there you go so that's going to be stage 17 three starred um and we're just punching on really with a couple of factions at a time where i feel like i've got the right champions you know with a couple of 60s already leveled up and i think i'll i'll take barbarians right through to 21 quickly so there you go i will continue to kind of plow on through any of the different factions that i feel like are the right kind of factions for me to develop um it's worth saying as well like i've got quite a lot of energy here i just got a login bonus for today i got like a what 600 odd energy bonus and I, was, I talked about it in a video yesterday we've got kind of like two times fever on dragons and you know there's there's plenty of gear that i want on the account we've got tournaments drop in 
um, events dropping, um, you know, things that I should just be doing. But at this lull in between fusions on the free to play, what I like to do is delve back into Minnow and not forget masteries on champions, which are important to my teams. So currently, I'm actually running masteries on Arbiter, and she is up to kind of what 235 out of the the 950 odd or whatever it is 900 um so that's where i'm going to be spending my time doing her masteries and doing dukes kind of follow on masteries as well at least I until i get a tier six i don't necessarily need to fill out a mastery page but it's nice to get to tier six and champions like rorick there that we're using for for a faction war team i actually don't mind just pun punching them up to like tier two or three to give them just a little boost of stats um as, as well so that that might be something that i do in this kind of lull in between fusions and fragments and you know if there's events that are okay but i'm just not that fussed about it i think that's what i'm going to end up doing with my energy the other thing which you can do at this time is just farm food you know get your food ready we know that champion training is tough um we also know that champions perform so much better when they're 50 versus 40 and 60 versus 50 so you know, the more champions that you can develop up, the better. Um, so let's get into Doom Tower then, the main event for this video. I've punched all the way up to stage 119. Along the way, I've been beating up a few secret rooms here. So we've we've missed, I think we've got like seven out of the 12 for this uh, cycle. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight out of 12 for this cycle. There's a few which... Uh, like this one here i'm kind of like close probably could i do it maybe i could do it um with the champions that i've got but in fact i mean we could try it just quickly but there's only really two champions that are holding their own here the rest of them are kind of just filler so i think they just get beaten up i feel like you need at least three champions to beat most of the secret rooms unless you've got someone who's who's just kind of crazy like a seal or someone like that I mean, in all honesty, the, the ones we've got are pretty solo friendly. So, you know, Duke and Venomage are both pretty good in terms of controlling whilst doing a ton of damage. But you see here, we've got no real, you know, crowd control in terms of um, stuns or sleeps or anything like that, which just means that we've always got damage coming back at us. And unless I put both of these in life steal gear specifically for this content, I think we end up struggling. Um, I mean, we we'll beat up wave one pretty well. I've seen he's just used his decreased defense. That's going to be a while until that's back. Taurus needs to get his unkillable back up as well. So, you know, if I was doing this off of um, <laughs> off of auto, which is I always kind of say to people you should do, then it would be tons easier, obviously. And when you get down to only two champs, obviously they're just taking a ton more damage. They've got a ton more attention. So, you know, Duke's probably in a a world of pain about now. I'm gonna go though. I'm gonna go. Stay alive, Duke. Yeah. So it comes down to Venomate. She's not in life still gear, but she does do some good AOE damage. So yeah, with a bit more work, I could probably do this. So maybe I'm not doing it right now, but I could. I could probably get this done. Uh, if I really wanted to push for those fragments. But let's get to the main event. So what's what's the team that I've been using to farm the waves? Raw 119. Deep. Uh, I've been using both of my drop defense champions here. One nuker. Two controllers. Yeah, so we've got AoE stuns. We've got AoE freezes. We've got decreased defense. And we've got damage. And honestly, um, this is like my arena build. Magna just blows everything up of his build he's also got high health because of his you know that's how he does damage so that kind of gets rid of wave one pretty well he also rotates back to his damage really damn like damn quick and then we just kind of like filter through to this drop defense damage drop defense nukage stuns freezes like there's just so much um there's so much versatility in this team and against normal doom tower it's just blowing it up and i've really not had any trouble with waves at all I've not had any points at all where I thought, how am I going to get through that wave? In Obviously, it becomes a lot harder when you get into hard Doom Tower because 
um, the mobs really do have a lot more health and defense and stats. But at this sort of stage, you know, just getting myself up to the top of Doom Tower on normal, really a drop defense champion, a hard damage dealer, and a couple of control champions, you should be able to do it. So that's what we've been doing, punching our way through. Final boss here is um, Iridoth. So pretty much with this one, um, I mean, I'd say he's one of one of the easier bosses for me. If I show you how I beat it at a lower level, just for kind of team comp purposes. This is the one that I've been farming as well. So I've got Geo pumping out damage whenever my team's taking hits. Speed, speed, uh, add control, and a lot of damage on the boss. And then I've got a nuke here in Kale. Um, so I think I'm going to use this team here. Speed and speed. Um, a decreased speed debuff. Pretty sure he's not immune to that. Loads of damage from Ninja. Loads of damage from Geo. So we can just auto our way through the, the waves. The main thing really, I mean, a decrease attack champion is very effective here. If you're struggling with the, the damage that you're taking. So it might be that Duke's just better for me. So I can't turn me to control this boss. I do kind of like the leech ability from, from my deep. So we'll see. We'll see if this is going to work or not. Uh, just A1 through here. So I've got my abilities up and, and good to go. So the, the boss will lock out abilities. All we need to do is just make sure that we're either bringing not many champions with lots of abilities or we get our abilities away nice and early. So we're going to use our 10 meter boost. Try and drop the defense. Got it. Because we're going to be able to A1 in a minute. Get the, the HP burn on. That's really important. I can't drop his turn meter, but the HP burn on here is still crucial. Now, I want decreased speed on, but I also don't want to take damage for this ability being off cooldown. So we're just going to use the ability, get the burns away. It's going to replace Geo's burns, which is actually a little bit annoying, but uh, it's so much damage that you can't afford to not do that ninja ability. Everything's locked out. I could either go for the adds here or. At this level on normal, I feel like I can just blow up the boss and almost like ignore the ads. So if he eats one of his big fat ads, then he will heal from that. But you see how much damage we've already done. Getting back round now to abilities being up. We get that decreased speed. No, maybe he's immune to decreased speed. I'm not sure. Coming back round to our actual ability. So we can start to put... Uh, decrease defense on the side adds as well. Keep our main abilities off cooldown. I'm going to try and get that burn back on here. So that when anyone takes damage now, there's a chance that um, Geo is going to do damage to the main boss. I'm going to throw out the random burns on the, the side adds. Keep the damage going. Keep using the abilities. In fact, we've got a little bit of time, so I can just hold that one for now. Just going to go AoE hit. Going with the A1 there. And really, I mean, we're on floor 120 here. Maybe it wouldn't be quite as comfortable if I was um, just like full auto. But feeling pretty damn good. Go for the freeze on the ads, just to kill off side ads. Keep our speed rolling. Going to get a bit of a heal, but that's fine. Throw the auto on at this point. I've lost uh, seal, which is actually, if we were further back in the fight, could have been a nightmare. But there you go. Final boss dead. Three minutes odd. Um, I don't know if this team fully autos it. It might do. But I'll, I'll try and get a team that is auto in it anyway. Got my Void Shard, which is actually big for, um, for this account in particular. Especially when I'm thinking about doing um, you know, the next fusion or the next fragment event. So really cool. Uh, and actually farming the gear here is not as effective for me as farming the Griffin. So I've already got a farm team for Griffin um, ready and rolling. It's about a 90% win rate at the moment. Um, Again, decrease attack is important here. And um, bringing very few champions that do turn meter 
push forward. Like anyone like a, a deep or an apothecary or something like that here is a nightmare. So it's just going to cause you a, a whole world of pain. You don't want that in the team. But um, even sealed can be a little bit problematic, but not anywhere near as bad as someone like a, an apothecary or a deep or a high cocoon. This is my, my auto farm griffin team. Um, I beat magma auto using two champions that provoke and then just a bit of damage. Um, so that was a, a very easy fight for me. This is probably the hardest battle that I, I had to fight, Never Spider. But now that I've got Sky Touched up to level 50, I've got a cleanse. Uh, again, I, it wasn't auto, it was a manual run, but pretty easy. Uh, basically, I used Ninja to blow up the side ads, um, Geo to put the burn on the spider, and um, Shaman and Seal basically to heal my team. And then we just kind of worked our way through the fight pretty comfortably. So that's Doom Tower Rotation 2 done. Um, we've got another new avatar that I can throw on. I can become the Dwarf King as of now. And then I guess one more rotation to go in terms of normal whilst I start to punch on with hard. And you know, last time I beat the Stage 10 boss, I guess um, we'll see how far I can take it on the free to play this time. There you go, guys. That's it. Faction Wars progressing well. Doom Tower. Two rotations done out of the three. Um, clan boss every day. We're kind of 2 tier normal. And I could 40 Ultra Nightmare. Uh, not normal. Nightmare. I could 40 Ultra Nightmare if I wanted to put the time into it. But I'm, I'm just not confident. I'm always going to get that fourth key in. Um, this game. Easy free to play, right? <laughs> anyway, guys. I've been Hell Hades. I will catch you later.